Hello everyone, so the iPhone has been released for 11 years already, has been for 11 iOS versions. So today we're going to be looking back at every major version of iOS that has ever been released for iPhone. And uh, some major iOS releases and some special features will be also covered on other devices. So let's get started. So let's first take a look at uh, the original iPhone with iPhone OS 1.0. So it was dubbed iPhone firmware, even though I just read it as I was like iPhone OS 1.0 because I don't want people to get confused. But it was dubbed iPhone firmware because Apple hasn't even mentioned the word iPhone firmware until I was, um, iPhone OS 3. So what the iOS uh, 1.0 brought was that it supported the iPhone and back then the original iPhone was the newest so it brought many features to the iPhone where you can just use the touch interface and have the music app with the um, cover flow it was really cool and later in a later version of iOS 1 um, I was 1.1.1 it came with the iTunes Wi-Fi music store and then 1.1.4 um, you have the ability to uh, rearrange apps on your home screen, but all of these iPhone OS 1 versions do not have the App Store, so you cannot install any apps without a jailbreak. So yeah, iOS 1 was just really basic iOS system for the original iPhone and the original iPod Touch. So now we're going to take a look at iPhone firmware 2.0 on the iPhone 3G. So here's an iPhone 3G, 16 gigs running iOS 2.0. So as you can see here, there are two new apps. The iTunes uh, Wi-Fi store was already added in 1.1.1, but that was running 1.0, so it, I didn't, you didn't get to see it. But it had the iTunes store and the App Store. There was brand new for iPhone firmware 2.0. And you can have the ability to download apps without jailbreaking. And that was a really big deal because it revolutionized how you use your iPhone. I couldn't possibly live out without any apps on my iPhone. So, of course, it also added the scientific calculator. And, yeah, iOS 2.0, except for the App Store and the scientific calculator, didn't add much features. So, this is basically it. So now we're going to take a look at iPhone OS 3. This was the first time that Apple mentioned the word iPhone OS. So as you can see here, it is much snappier, on the 3GS at least. You can see the animations are just super smooth. And of course it added spotlight search. So you can just search for anything on the iPhone, like music, contacts, or anything basically. So also it added the um, ability to have, to copy and paste, to select text. So you can, as you can see here, you can click select all and you can copy and paste. So it was new in iOS 3. So you may take it for granted today, but it was a very new feature back in the day. So also added voice memos and also added compass for the iPhone 3GS. Pretty cool. And here we come to iOS 4. The major overhaul and the first time of the history of iOS. So as you can see here, it supported the brand new iPhone 4 at the time with the brand new Retina display. So you can see here, iOS 4 is much smoother with the new animations. It is uh, like 30 FPS. It's like much uh, more smooth than iOS 3. You can just see iOS 3 chops a little bit and it's a little slow, but on iOS 4, it was completely revamped. You can just see that the phone feels faster, and of course, we had the ability to add background wallpapers on the home screen instead of just the lock screen. Previously on iPhone OS 3, you can only add it on the lock screen, as you can see here. And you had the ability to make folders, and this is really cool. And also, this added multitasking, where you can just um, click the home button twice, and then it gives you a little very basic app page for you to switch uh, between apps and some very simple controls under there. So this was really cool. So, And it also added Game Center in iOS 4.1, and also redesigned the um, Voice Memos app in iOS 4.1. So this is... No, not 4.1, I believe it is 4.2, uh, so my 4 is, is running um, iOS 4.3. This is basically everything it about iOS 4.
So here we come to iOS 5, and not a big update, but added a lot of new features to iOS. So first of all, in iOS 5.0 to iOS 5.1, when it's on 5.0 to 5.0.1, you need to double click your home button to get the little camera grabber. But this is iOS 5.1.1, so it added the camera grabber that existed up till iOS 9. So we slide to unlock, we go into the phone, we have we uh, Apple added new stand, and they added um reminders. Those are basically just cloud-based apps where you can just view your stuff on iCloud. So of course, a new feature in iOS 5 is iCloud, where it is just the cloud system that syncs everything um, to your phones on like after you download it on one device. So also renamed the iPod app to music. So add a red icon. It's pretty cool. And also added Siri support for the 4S. So this is basically iOS 5. And here we come to iOS 6, the last iOS version with the schemorphic design that uh, reflects everywhere in the operating system. You can just see it on the in the control center and oh, sorry I keep saying control center for the notification center. The notification center to everywhere. It was the last ever iOS version. So let's talk about features. The features it added Apple Maps. And it deleted the old Google Maps, which I don't understand why would they would do that because Google Maps was like really good, but um, and Apple Maps was pretty crappy on iOS six. But um, except for that, we have Passbook, and of course Apple also removed the built-in um old style YouTube app instead, where you need to use the third-party YouTube app. So this is pretty cool. So uh, this is the last iOS version that Steve Jobs ever. Um, had in part with design and stuff. So now we go to iOS 7, where was a complete redesign of iOS in ages and uh, from like iOS 1.0. You can see right there. So it had this flat interface with, when it re was released. A lot of people didn't like it, but personally, I really like this. And it's just really colorful. And features that not much. It was just basically a reskin version of iOS 6. So there was a new um app switcher and you can see there's control center. They finally added control center. We can just access these very quick toggles right here. And it's really cool. And also add some transparency effects. You can just see through the thing. And you can just see the parallel effect when you move the phone around. The wallpaper moves with it. So you can just look behind the apps. It's really cool. So this is basically iOS 7, and now we move to iOS 8. Well, iOS 8 is my personal favorite version of iOS because it just has a very stable, completely untethered jailbreak, and it still supports the app I need. And it's a much more stable version of iOS 7, and it was just better than iOS 9. So iOS 8 added the Passbook app. No, it didn't add it, but just redesigned the icon a little bit. And iOS 8 also lets you the, uh, have the ability to have third-party keyboards. And of course, when you receive a notification, I don't have apps on this at the moment. When you receive a notification, there will be a little bar. You can just pull it down and the keyboard will appear and you can just uh, quick reply. So of course, the everything is basically the same as iOS 7. So yeah, this is pretty much it for iOS 8. So here we have iOS 9. It was a little feature bump for iOS, nothing special here, but add support for 3D Touch on the iPhone 6S, where you have some little 3D Touch toggles where you press hard on the um, some apps, certain apps that support it. It will have some um, the quick action for you to access. And of course, iOS 9 also added um, low power mode, so you can... Um, minimize the power that uses for iOS, but this turns off the Hey Siri feature. Um, it turns out off other features that you probably won't notice, but it's very useful when you're low on battery. Of course, iOS 9 also added the new font to the keyboard, and also you can see the keyboard is all lowercase when it's in lowercase, and uppercase when it's in uppercase, and stuff when it's always um, uppercase on iOS 8. So, and iOS 9 also added night nice shift to the scene. Um, at, this was on iOS 9.3 at least. So as you can see here, add a toggle to control center. Just click it and your phone is in night shift mode. It's pretty cool, but 
it was a pretty bad decision for Apple to also remove F. Lux from the App Store. So this is basically iOS 9. So here we come to iOS 10. I had a redesigned uh, widgets page. So it's, it's little blocks and stuff, like lines between all of them. Of course, added the cool date effect right there. And iOS 10 added a two-page control center, which is very useful at times. But I think the night shift logo is unnecessary, uh, unnecessarily big. And when you scroll to the second page, it's music. But if you, there will be a third page if you have home installed or you if you use like smartphone um appliances and of course it added click to unlock it was a um it was the slide to unlock was removed and so when you slide now it goes to this widget page and um the camera page is accessed by a uh, swipe to the right so as you can see here we click to unlock and also iOS 10 had some uh new animations when opening apps and closing apps and stuff so that is pretty cool but not many new features so yeah this is basically it for iOS 10. So now we come to the current iOS 11. So iOS 11 brought quite a lot of new features, including the fully customizable um, control center. You can just see here, if you freely touch on these toggles, you get a lot more information and have this more accurate um, sliding mechanism. So this is really cool. So you can finally toggle low power mode in the control center and this is really cool i am a big fan of this so and ios 11 also had a new notification center it's just like the home screen and the notification coming together so this is basically the uh, lock screen so when you just slide over here you can just see this and when you slide to the other side you go to camera mode so this is basically pretty much it for ios 11 and also I have some new animations which are pretty cool, but they're pretty slow, so nothing special. But iOS 11 welcomed a brand new device and a brand new way to control your iOS device to the game with iPhone 10. So iPhone 10 had no home button and a full screen display, which is really amazing. So now you just used a the fully gesture based operating system. So you just uh, slide up and pause to go to App Switcher by closed all the apps. And of course, we have the uh, control center at the top. Really cool. iOS 11 brought the brand new um, gestures to the iPhone 10. So you can just see here, it works perfectly. The animations are really fast and it's really responsive, which is really cool. I really like the new effects on here. And iOS 11 added quite a few features for the iPad too. So for example, I pull out a app like tw uh, Twitter. You can see here, we there's a dock on here. You can just pull a supported app like YouTube and just put it on the screen. It's really cool. It's really interactive on iOS 11. So you guys just move the app window around if it's an unsupported app. But if it's a supported app, you can just pull on this tab and it will go into multitasking. It is really cool and a really cool feature um, for iOS 11 on the iPad. On the iPad, it also added this new um, app switcher slash control center page where all the apps are in here, but I closed all of them, of course. Um, with the windows right here and the um, control center toggles right here. So this is pretty cool. So instead of just double clicking the home button, you can just also slide up and you can also get the app switcher. So this is really cool. So in conclusion, iOS has changed quite a lot in 11 years. I can't, I still can't wrap my mind around that my iPhone, original iPhone was made 11 full years ago. This is pretty amazing. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thank you all guys for watching. And of course, peace out.